if you look at every single region of this country that has been ruined in the last 30 years, it's either been through poorly applied capitalism, which can be fixed, I'm sure, I know it can, just give it another chance, youngsters, or Londoners going there in their masses. I'd rather watch a relegation six-pointer than a, than a Wimbledon semi-final. Phil's uh, mildly controversial opinion is that he doesn't like just lying by the pool in case he falls asleep and gets an erection. <laughs> that and, and boredom, basically. Yeah. You, cause you, cause you get on the plane and you travel, but yeah, no, no, I mean, I don't, I, you know, but especially now. This, this extra stuff that you've just said, I'm, I'm going to edit that out anyway. Yeah, so no. I'm <laughs> Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Mildly Controversial Podcast. Um, with myself and Baz this week is a man who needs no introduction. So, you right, mate? Uh, yes, I, yeah, I am. Good. Yes, right, yes. No, I, 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 I will actually give you an introduction. I just thought <laughs> I that did. was a... It's a bit of a kind of a, like an 80s game show gag that I thought I'd start with this week. So, this is uh, Phil. Uh, Phil Carr, he is um, a friend of Baz and I who, um, when we decided we were going to move this to the Mildly Controversial podcast and we wanted guests to come on and share their mildly controversial opinions, um, Phil's uh, name um, was the first that we thought of. Because if you don't know Phil, um, get onto his TikTok at PhilC84 um, and you'll basically see a man who's not a grumpy middle-aged man but pretty much his without the middle-aged bit. So fits perfectly into who we are and uh, and what we're trying to do here on this podcast. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I think the, I think the main problem is I come across grumpier on TikTok than I than I actually am because I don't really smile when I talk. So um, yeah, but that's kind of the franchise I've now got. So I live with it. <laughs> Well, the, a lot of people will be listening to this rather than watching it anyway. So as long as you just keep your voice in a kind of a kind of a mono, you know, monotone kind of grumpy, miserable thing, we won't even know if you're smiling or not. So uh, I, I'm, I'm nervous. It will probably be quite easy to do that. Um, <laughs> as uh, as you know, we've invited you on to. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things. Um, Baz and I might chip in with a couple of. Uh, mildly controversial opinions of our own, but we want to start off with um, one of yours. So you know what the you know the deal with this. Um, let us know uh, a, an opinion you hold that you think might be mildly controversial, and we will discuss. And we may even do a, almost like kind of a, a like a mildly controversial podcast seal of approval or rejection. So mm. there's a little bit of jeopardy in there. So what are we talking yeah. first, Phil? Okay, so let's start off with Israel. Is it? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. We, we. <laughs> <laughs> this mildly. This I said this mildly. <laughs> no, so my, my first uh, mildly controversial opinion is I don't like beach holidays. I, I cannot stand a holiday on which you do nothing other than lounge around. I don't mind being in the sunshine. I don't mind being in the Mediterranean. I don't mind those things but I've got to be doing stuff with my day. I don't know whether it's genetically me and if I have nothing to do through the day, my body just kind of says, I'd rather be in bed than by the side of a pool. But I don't like going and laying by the side of a pool for a week or two weeks or whatever to the point where my wife now, for her beach holiday, for her Mediterranean sun-soaked holiday each year, just goes with my mother-in-law. They go away <laughs> together and it's a win, 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 win. <laughs> for all concerned but i i cannot do it i get agitated i get I, I i just don't like it and i know a lot of people for them it is one of the highlights of their year to go to some godforsaken mediterranean resort where health and safety is but a word and the food is really not that good even at the good places and uh, or they get all inclusive and they get excited about a buffet which is pretty average like I say, I love being away. I love going away with my friends to resorts. I love going away with a big crowd of people. So there's a big crowd of people. There's always something going on. So lots of people can be lounging by the pool, but someone might want to go and see a Greek ruin or something like that. So they'll go. But yeah, I do not like, be, I, I don't like just lounging around on holiday. It, it's, it's, I don't like it. 
There, I've said it. <laughs> it it is quite cathartic this podcast, isn't it? <laughs> just like, it just, oh, good. Yeah, this is off my chest. <laughs> so, um, Baz and I uh, see. I thought you were going in a direction there that Baz and I have already covered on this. That <laughs> it's the beach is the issue, but it's not because um, Baz and I have discussed that we would much rather just lay by the pool than go to the beach because the beach pisses us off because you get sand everywhere and it's too hot and you're too far from the toilet, too far from the bar, all of those things. Okay. Um, but it's not yours is more kind of um, you need to be doing stuff and I look I agree with that in terms of like Emma will just lie by the pool constantly and she no, she's down there which to be fair is good for grabbing some beds but she's down there from like half eight uh, before the sun's even thought about coming up why? and she'll stay there all day like but what's his obsession with getting a sunbed right next to the pool Where's that come from? That's outside of my my focus. Don't get me wrong. I watched the TikToks. I love the TikToks of people getting up at 5.30 in the morning. And there was that guy who blew up last year because he worked on a resort. He was going around collecting the towels. And then he set up a camera filming everyone as they came back out. But the, I don't get why you need to... I mean, the sun is the sun. The sun is is a fixed distance away mm. and surely the pool is noisy with kids i've never done it the pool the pool is noisy surely being a couple of rows back or is it like a status thing i don't know yeah i, I don't think it's a status thing i think it's just people think the sun is better by the pool so you get it out of the water i'm with you on this i i quite often don't even enter the side of the pool i'll go through the grass area and set up a bed on that because you're only going to be 20 meters away from the pool at the worst aren't you if you if, you, if you're further back there yeah, maybe at the resorts you go to, Baz, but I, I uh, you know, I, I, the, the ones that I used to go to, it'd be, uh, you could be even further than that. But yeah, it, it, it winds me up. I have my theories about why the British public love it so much, but um, we'll come on to those. So yeah, the um, I get the thing that like, I I can't be asked lying in the sun all day. I mean, look, I've got I've got two Scottish parents. I'm definitely not. I've got two Scottish parents. I come from Northern England and I live in Ireland. Do you know what I mean? My kids turn from blue to white on holiday. You, That's just you, you. You have got you have got see through skin. Yeah, you're, I'm, you're not, like... I'm not. I'm not built for the sun. I, look, I do get a tan, but it takes me literally the entire summer to get a tan. <laughs> Really, really slowly. Do you know what I mean? I can, I, I can eventually get a tan if I've got a, a whole summer of doing all right. And like, even here, it, no, it doesn't need to be much sun. I just need it for a really, really prolonged time. But no, I've, I've never been one to just kind of lie sweating in the sun. And 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 the thing of, uh, like you said, the um, activities and doing stuff. When we went to Core Food uh, a, a month or so ago, we went to a place that had its own water park attached to it, and that was perfect. Yeah, the, and our kids, our kids are of an age now, so we we we, we lay by the on the on a um, on a sunbed by the pool, which was the wave pool, which was pretty cool because every ten minutes when I'm too hot, just jump in there on a rubber ring and bounce around on the waves and stuff. So it was perfect. And then every so often, like the kids, the kids are like old enough to know that me and the missus aren't cool to hang around anymore. So they kind of do their own thing, and then every so often we'd go into the water park. Well, um, I don't for like three that. hours and then back again. It was cool. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. You, you and right, you're not cool. To, how many followers have they got on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> so they like that. Oh, well, my son likes that. My son's proud of that. My daughter hasn't told any of her friends that I have any slight representation on social media. She's she's petrified that's that damning, her that's friends will find out that I am on social media. A damning review. A damning so he, review. She was devastated that um, two weeks ago, um, two weeks ago was the first time anybody's ever mentioned, anybody I don't know has ever come up to me and said something about TikTok two weeks ago. My daughter was mortified. <laughs> so, the, uh, apparently the uh, apparently the, uh, the store manager of our local um, Aldi in deepest, darkest Donegal is from Berry. And knows me off TikTok, so wow, that was two things that blew my mind that day. You get ten percent off. Yeah, he said I can go and have a chat with him anytime. So he didn't wink when he said it, but I'm definitely going to try and use that sort of influence. Maybe I'll use uh, maybe I'll use that link to try and get served alcohol at ten twenty four. Because the other week I was in Aldi, and you're not allowed to buy alcohol until half past ten. Right. And I, I didn't know that. 
Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I I went in there and I'm just we're buying everything like the proper shop. Everything goes through, and then she goes to scan the bathroom. It goes dude, dude. I was like, oh, what's up with that? He went, I can't sell you this for another six minutes. Do you understand? <laughs> I was like, I was like. Oh God. So we paid for everything that had gone through so far. And then she took the like 10 pack of beer or whatever away from me. And I had to kind of linger around the till like a bad smell until I looked at her and said, is it half 10 yet? And it doesn't matter who you are. You can't help feeling like some kind of like alcoholic bum on the street when you're waiting six minutes to buy some beer that you're not going to drink for maybe a week. That feels yeah. a bit like the uh, the Michael, um, I also know the the Bad Day film with. Oh, hey, I'll cut this bit. Right, anyway, let's go back. Let's yeah. go back. Phil's going to have to help you with that. You said the word film, so Phil will have to help you with that because I have no idea. I've watched about seven in my life. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about, Mike. Anyway. Well, do you know what? Sometimes, sometimes, Phil, between me and you, he won't be listening. Be- between me and you, when, when, when you know, when Baz is of an age where sometimes oh, no. he just starts rambling and you've just got to kind of nod your head and just accept. He's like, he's like the, 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 the weird uncle in the corner at Christmas. Do you know what I mean? You've just, yeah. got, to, you've just Baz, got to let him do it. But Baz, what, what, what year are we talking here? What year are we talking here? It's a Michael, Doug- it's a Michael Douglas film. Oh, okay. So it's a talkie, is it? It's a talkie. <laughs> it's a talkie, yes. <laughs> to be fair, it's a Michael Douglas film. It could be anywhere from the past six decades. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'd like to go back to the subject which Phil, Phil started. Phil, are you a reader? Do you read a lot of books? Yes, I do read, but I'm not very good. And I can't fall asleep by the side of a swimming pool um, because I'm nervous that I will... Um, something very magical will happen in my sleep and I'll be laying there. Um, by the side of a pole. Um, <laughs> it's about Matrix. morning glory. <laughs> it, 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 it's an irrational fear I have. It's never happened, but it is an irrational fear that I have. I just don't feel comfortable sleeping uncovered in front of a large amount of other people. It, it, I just can't do it. So I like to get up, so I walk around the hotel a lot. I go for walks around the town. Um you seem to lower your standards when you're in Mediterranean towns. You seem to lower your standards uh, like quite a lot for what's good food, what's good bread, what's good, you know, like, you know, especially these touristy places. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I get pretty bored and my wife knows I get pretty bored. So she's quite happy to go and not have me there. Okay. Uh, uh, just to, just to wrap this, uh, this section up, I just want to, um, I just want to, uh, summarize that, um, um, that Phil's uh, mildly controversial opinion is that he doesn't like just lying by the pool in case he falls asleep and gets an erection. <laughs> that and, and boredom, basically. Because yeah. you, you, you get on the plane and you travel. But yeah, no, no, I mean, I don't, I, you know, but especially now. This, this extra stuff that you've just said, I'm, I'm going to edit that out anyway. Yeah, so no, I <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially now I've got a, now I've got a little bit of profile. I, I don't want a picture of me lying on a sun lounger with an erection through, um, you know, Adidas swimming trunks. As I've sat there for hours next to my wife, who just lays there doing nothing, just lounging by the pool. And I look around and I just see people sipping on drink, slowly getting tanned. And I kind of think there must be more to it than this. We're supporting <laughs> you on this one. Absolutely. The, I, the, wholeheartedly, I, yeah. I wholeheartedly agree with you, Phil. Yeah. I, my, my We're wife. rubber stamping that theory. Yeah, my wife can't lie by the pool, so we always find activity activities to do. And I'm oh, saying, I, bet I, get, you do. I get bored and I've got to go somewhere. I can't sit by the pool all day. Baz, I think uh, I think you and uh, you and Liz need to come on holiday with us. Yeah. So <laughs> Emma can lay by the pool and I'll go doing stuff. But I'm, yeah. I'm not doing anything like that involves any kind of effort. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not one of these that goes hiking on holiday. My thing when I get bored of lying by the pool, I'll go to the bar and then back again. And then maybe somewhere else, and then back again. It's just uh, I'll I'll ferret around doing different things, and just like rather than sit in one place. Right. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, um, that's officially been rubber stamped. Um, you're in with that one. So Nothing controversial there. One thing Can that I'll- I wanted to cover on this is something that I experienced a couple of weeks ago, and um, 
if you are one of the lucky 5% of uh, my TikTok followers who was actually shown uh, the TikTok that I did on this, um, you will have heard um, that I was in the um, I was in the DIY store the other day, which um, which I am quite often, and and I want to appeal to manufacturers of paint to just call it the fucking color that it is. Do you know what I mean? Just co- li- there's nothing wrong with light blue, mid blue, dark blue. That just call it something else because I've got a list here of some ridiculous paint names and. They give no indication of what colour it is. And, in fact, it sounds a bit like, you know when Alan Partridge just speaks into his dictaphone and comes out with just fucking ridiculous TV show ideas? It sounds like someone at a paint company has done this with, like, you know, idea for paint colour. Um, and they've got, right, it is a few. You've got, look, I'm going to go straight in with the most fucking bizarre that I can ever think. Elephant's Breath. Is dark a paint gray. color, dark gray. I was like, I've no idea. I can't even remember. No, it's, I, I can't even remember what color it is. Right, it's but, great. It's good. It's a good one. But it's elephant's breath. It's visionary. Good, good. Well, you say it's visionary. You can't see breath. So how can it have a fucking color? <laughs> I don't know. Mine can be quite rancid at times. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was gonna say after a night out. <laughs> yeah, Baz's breath would be green. <laughs> but that's the, but that's not one. Um, there's uh, there's one called pointing. 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 Re- that 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 must be blue. Is that a blue? I've no idea. I no, it's it, like here we go. Stuff. Here we go. There, there, there is a blue here that mentions it. It actually mentions blue in the name, so it doesn't kind of fit in with what I'm saying. That you don't really know what color it is. But um, this one, right? It's by F and B. I can't remember what the uh, full name of that is, but F and B seems to be pretty. They seem to be culprits of doing yeah. this quite a lot. Um, anyway, this one is Dix Blue, like D I X Blue. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. But-, but 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 why would you name something? It sounds like something that a pensioner is complaining of to his GP. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, was like, I don't know what's gone wrong, but me Dix Blue. Why would you use that? as a paint colour. It just doesn't make sense. So um, what I've done here, right, um, on this theme is a little bit of a challenge between the two of you. Okay. Right? Can we yeah. my, I'm colourblind here as well. We're going to... Yes, Baz is colourblind, so there's a slight... Look, it's not that. We're not going to go into what colour is this. What we're going to do, we're going to play a game of paint or ain't. Oh, okay. Oh, I like it. Uh, I like see it. where I've gone with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. I'm going to say the name of a paint colour, and I need you two to decide whether it is a paint or it ain't. Yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. Put your uh, put your disability back in the box, Baz. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's nothing to do with that, you know. You and yeah, yeah I, was, just I just felt entitled on a colour thing. That was all. Yeah, just yeah. You, 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 you only trade off it for the blue badge in the car. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, I it, well, it, it, you know what? Oh, it, grey badge, grey badge is, is it? Him. Purple badge. He, he's only he, he's only going off what they've told him that he's got a blue badge to park outside Tesco. <laughs> it could be any colour. He hasn't got a clue. <laughs> oh my god! If I was a car salesman and a, bl- and a colourblind person came in, I I would. Yeah, no. You, what what colour do you know? I want uh, like um, uh, just grey, just grey car. It's like yeah, yeah, definitely grey. Definitely great. You just get rid of something on the forecourt that you cannot sell because of the colours. So you just give him like some lime green focus but, or something. But but if they're colour blind, it was just like, you know, what colour do you want? It was like, I don't know because I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> so how do you do that, Baz? Do you know what colour your car is, Baz? No, I know colours as they've been described to me. What I don't know is when the, the, they're not direct red, green, blue. So if they're shades of or mixes of, it, particularly red and green, my world is fucked. Well, that must be interesting at traffic lights. Well, no, because there's only three, <laughs> three colours, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> you, can't tell the, it, sorry, officer, I can't tell the difference between red and green. It doesn't quite work that way, but yes, I could get away with some stuff. Right then, gentlemen. So we're going to play paint or ain't. So yeah, I'm going to say a, I'm going to say the name of a paint color, and you've got to say whether it, it's paint or ain't. Um, is it a paint color, or have I made it up? I'm going to start with paper bag. 
Uh, they, straight away, I'm thinking uh, paper bags could be absolutely any colour, but, but more predominantly, they are like manila envelopes, aren't they? The what? Paper bags are pretty. In the first thought about paper bags, no, the envelope. Those, what did you say about the envelope? Those manila envelopes are that sort of brown color. I it's do. The name, it's the name of a type yeah. of an envelope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, manila. Oh, okay. I thought manila was a color, and I was like, shit. A colorblind guy has just told me a color I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this is a low point. Um, manila. Okay, right. So, no, what we're sorry, saying, what we're like, saying, boys, paper bag. I think it's a colour. I'm going to take an early gamble and say that it isn't, but I do kind of think it is. But I like for the thrill of the competition, I'll say okay. that it isn't. Okay. Well, um, right. I'll let you off this first one, but I did go to a lot of trouble to call this fucking section paint or ain't. So I think it's <laughs> oh, a it colour, and I don't think it's a colour, and not acceptable answers going <laughs> forward. All right, but I will take them on this one. So Baz I think that's said. A- so Bad says it is a colour. Um, Phil says it's not. Um, I'm just double checking my list. No, I made that one up. So Phil okay. gets a point. <laughs> okay. So I don't next... have I don't have ain't in my vocabulary. <laughs> Come on, bring it out. Pretend. But it's a taint. Oh no, taint. don't do that. That's a that's a that's a part of the body we don't that, talk that's about. A, that, that, that's a bit between your uh... <laughs> yes, <that is> like... <laughs> between Whoops. your bits and your bits. Yes. That's the, the, the front and the back. Right. Okay. Google it, so um, That's my version. Needles and pins. Uh, ain't. Ain't. Yeah, it, well, if, if it is, I don't like it. So I'm going to say ain't as well. Well, you're both wrong because that is a paint by uh, Crown Paints. And what colour is it? I've no idea. Don't ask me what colour it is. You're fucking colour blind. All right, grey. That's all right. <laughs> Close enough. That's, they're all gray, they're all different shades of grey. <laughs> okay. Next one. Good vibes. That's uh, a paint. Yeah, that's wanky enough to be a paint, isn't it? You've both gone uh, for paint? Yeah. Well, I've conned you both. It's a song by Jedward. <laughs> Boom. Right. Next one is McQueen. McQueen. That's a paint. That's definitely a paint. Are we thinking there's a red one from the film Cars? Uh, the, what are you going with? Cars. Cars. Uh, I'm going to go for it's a paint as well because I think it's a red. Um, I don't know what colour it is, but you're both correct. That is a paint by Fleetwood. Give uh, Fleetwood, uh, oh, Fleetwood paint thank a you very much, Fleetwood. name check there, just in <laughs> case they want to. Uh, look, uh, we say this pretty much every week. I don't give a shit what product wants to sponsor this. If anyone wants to come out with the money, we'll, we'll, we'll whore ourselves out to anyone. So Fleetwood, I really like McQueen. Let's go for it. So, uh, yeah, we'll... Uh, we'll uh, color. Yeah, we, we'd love that one. Right, next one is flexibility. Oh, um, ain't. I'm going to say ain't. I'm going to take a gamble and say it is then. Okay. Well, uh, Phil gets another point. Uh, <laughs> I made that up. There he is. Yay. Okay. Um, we'll do a couple more. Okay. Um, Yukon Gold. Keep going with it. Keep rolling. Go on. We can get 100 out of this. Go on. <laughs> this will be the... Once I've edited it, this will be the whole 45 minutes of the podcast. <laughs> we'll just be this And then you just, then you just do this every week. And then within like three or four years, you've got kind of got David Beckham on and you've got... Because <laughs> all you need is one famous person, and then all of the others will want to be on it. Oh, we've, we've got, got the famous else. person after you. That's it. Everyone's going to want to be on. Okay, so yeah, um, Yukon Gold. That's yes. a paint. Yeah, yeah, paint. paint. Well, I've conned you both again. That's a potato. <laughs> oh, family tree. I mean, I'm just oh. guessing here. Yes, that's a family. But that's a paint. And, and and am I and am I I'm two points up, am I? Yes. You can't lose, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so if I may indulge in a bit of shit housery, then I will agree. <laughs> I will agree with Baz. Good tactics. I didn't think this was gonna turn into something that it was so competitive or if that Baz anybody would give a shit. But it's if like, Baz okay. wasn't colorblind, I wouldn't be so passionate about it. <laughs> like, I <laughs> cannot lose a pa- uh, family tree is a paint and it's made by crown paints so, oh. and also that's the first time anyone's used the word shithousery on our podcast and i love it 
Yes. Yes. It's definitely not going to be the last. Zeitgeist. Well, Peter Basil being playing chicken on who's going to talk first now. Uh, listen, also another wanky name. It's got to be a paint. For, for, to make the last, I'm going to say it isn't. I'm going to, yeah, but you, you, you've only thrown about three real paints in the whole time because you've just had so much fun thinking of these. <laughs> um, the, the, uh, yeah, I'm going to say it isn't a paint. Ain't, ain't. It is a paint. Oh. It's a paint by Craig and Rose. Bus, did you say yes, it is? I did. Is this the decider then? So we've got, have we got to go either way for this one. I'll do two more because you're one behind. I'll do two more for jeopardy reasons. Yeah, but well, what I, I don't what? want it to be a draw, so we'll do two more. Oh, where am I going with this? I've got a big list, and I'm going to go with Minero. Minero. Well, it's, it's all guessing. Uh, I'm going to go eight. I'm going to go paint. Well, that is interesting because that equalises it at 4-4. Four, four, and it's also absolute, interesting because not absolute. only is it not a paint, um, that's a Chelsea player. He played under Phil Scolari. So uh, for those that don't oh, know... Oh, no, for goodness sake, that's about... There are people watching this that haven't even been... Well, in fact, everybody watching this from TikTok, so none of them were born at that <laughs> point. It was, um, but importantly, you, a Chelsea fan, were, and you didn't spot that I'd thrown in a Chelsea fan. <laughs> right. Yeah, it wasn't exactly, it wasn't exactly Drogba, was it? It was uh <laughs> and there's a good reason for that. <laughs> Cuz I didn't want to year to get it. Anyway, right. So it has come down to the last one then. And Phil, I'm going to let you go first because good. of your proven shit housery. Yeah. yeah. Um that's why I'm right. I I need one shot. Recipe book. Hmm. So so all of them have sounded like paints to me so far. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment because the ones that aren't I made up yeah, exactly. or, or found I, songs by Jedward Potatoes and it's your, it's your new job for Crown is to name their paint for you. I, I'm going to go paint I'm going to go paint on that well just obviously to make it a competition I'm going to go for eight and Phil you can spare your blushes you haven't lost a paint colour challenge type quiz against a colour blind man <laughs> you pulled it out of the bag when it mattered it was almost like a penalty shootout that um, in your face Baz you come at me on colours you don't stand a chance <laughs> I think not only have we illustrated that um, paint colours are fucking stupid um, I think we've quite well illustrated that and um, hopefully entertained people and took the piss out of somebody's disability at the same time. So yeah. what's not to love about that section? You're welcome. <laughs> uh, on that bombshell, I think we should, uh, we should get uh, our guest to, uh, to tell us another, uh, another uh, mildly controversial opinion. Um, well, this, this I don't know how mildly controversial this is because we're going into a cost of living crisis. So it, it could, it's probably the norm, but um, for me, I never say it at the time when I'm somewhere or invited somewhere or with people or whatever. But for me, it's expensive champagne, and then to evolve that because I thought I can't just say champagne. You, know, you get you you get served an expensive champagne at a wedding. And to me, it just tastes like a cheap champagne. Uh, but but pretty much any expensive food. There have been exceptions where we've gone to like really, really top restaurants. But then I found that out of the Michelin-starred restaurants we've been to, me and my wife, over the years, and there haven't been many, those aren't actually... A lot of those aren't actually that expensive. But some places you go, it's mega money. And I just don't... I don't see... My taste buds, my taste receptors don't seem to be on a level where I can decipher, you know, a, a £200 bottle of champagne from a £40 bottle of champagne. I, mm. I just can't do it. Same with spirits. Whiskey, I pretend that I do. Cigars, you might when you're told. Some of them seem a bit smoother when a, it's a £50 cigar as opposed to a £10 cigar. But, yeah, I, I just don't... I, I, I think it's me... I just don't get why people will go out and spend five or six hundred pounds on a meal when I, I, you could, you could go to Five Guys and be just as happy. I'll start with the uh, the champagne thing, and um, believe it or not, I have uh, I have drunk a load of sh champagne in my time. Um, 
through a combination of being um, through my corporate job and, you know, being quite privileged to be in ridiculously expensive restaurants and also um, me and Emma going through a stage of our life where we just spent money like someone was going to fucking take it off us. So we <laughs> used to drink a lot of champagne for for that reason. We've, we've come out the other side of that now, thankfully. I say this as a man who's currently drinking uh, Aldi Prosecco. So uh, I think I'm very qualified to talk about this. <laughs> That you know, I've gone through that and come out the other side. I absolutely agree. Um, that it's just you have got to have such a refined palate to be able to tell the difference between cheap wine, expensive wine, cheap champagne, expensive champagne, carver. I've got a friend who was a wine buyer for a supermarket, okay, uh, in Australia. He knows everything, he would li- could literally just go, Yeah, that's. That's where it's from. That's the grape. That's the year and everything by tasting it, right? I think. I think genetically, it's just passed me by. Some people can run fast. Some people naturally have good muscle mass. I just think that my taste buds just aren't accurate enough. I, 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 uh, uh, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I won't say no to a glass of champagne, but I do always feel like when I'm somewhere or, or at a restaurant and we order it or something like that. I just sit there feeling like this is wasted on me. I really, you know, like a, a pint of neck oil would be just as welcome. And it, like I say, it, it, it is kind of the same with certain foods as well. Like, like I do. It's not that I don't think they're good. I, I just don't. I just don't enjoy them as much as I think other people do. Don't know. Phil, I'm 100% behind this because I've done that thing where we, we've been around someone's. Uh, no, it was at a wedding. Where the special what uh, champagne was some Dom Perignon, yeah, and I got a hold of it and I was like, I just felt I had to say it was nice and better than anything else I'd tried before because I knew it was expensive and I knew that they really loved it. To me, it just tasted like fizzy white wine. Yeah, um, you, no, sorry, sorry you, I've, I've just realised that um, I, uh, my co-host in uh, in a podcast called the Mildly Controversial Podcast is somebody who will try a champagne and go. Oh, 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 that's lovely. When they don't think it's lovely. <laughs> I hope you're not still when like you, that, Baz. We, we need get, more forthright opinions than that. What, at a wedding? At a wedding? Yeah. Where's the bride? Go get the bride. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> this? You get this, this from fucking shit. Aldi or what? You've you, you're dumb. interrupting the photos. You're interrupting the family photos. <laughs> Your champagne's shit. <laughs> Oi, you. Come here. Come here. Come here. Like, <laughs> seriously? You've done your dough on this. Absolute waste of time. Scumbags like me can't tell the difference. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with Phil though. I don't, I don't have the, uh, I don't have the, the sort of subtlety to understand wine anyway. For me, it's I don't really like it. I like, I like three or four different ones, which I like the taste of, but the rest of them is just shite as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> We we, we really are the creme de la creme of the uh, of, of society, aren't we? The, the the same the same thing happens with with sort of um, one minute beer review on on TikTok. Who I love, I love one minute beer review, and but he he makes me seem like a caveman because I like neck oil and I like I like sort of all of these things. You, you know, just supermarket lagers. They don't taste of anything. Oh, they they taste of something and they taste all right to me. And I'm, you know, like I, and then people sort of say, are you getting the citrus? Are you getting it? I'm like, no, I'm not. No. See, no, that's, we, we, that's we, we, not we, we've mentioned, drinking. We've mentioned this before in a previous podcast that I'm, I'm convinced that the, um, you know, 15 years ago, um, you had wine snobs. And we're like, Oh, can you not appreciate this? Like, oh, oh, there's the, uh, I'm getting notes of this, that, and the other. And, <laughs> No, they're doing all this. I don't know why I went. I went all silence of the lambs. Then I didn't mean to do that. That's not the type of la- la- the wine, the wine authority I'm talking about. But um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, Chianti apparently is nice. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> that's not where I was going with that. But yeah, like I'm saying, it's like not the actual connoisseurs who know what they're talking about. You get this level of just wankers who just think they know about it. They, they've progressed now. They don't. They don't do wine anymore. They do craft beer. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. And they just yeah. go, Oh, well, you know, this was, uh, you know, I, it may be six pound a bottle, but it's, you know, it's brewed by, uh, it's brewed by monks in, uh, in, uh, you know, the, the Takaba and it's like, oh, piss off, man. It's like, does it taste nice or does it not? If it, it tastes was- nice, I'll have a go. Half of these things are there when they go like, Oh, oh yeah. It's like half of the bloody craft beers. I try, like my brother drinks a few craft beers. He try them and just think, Fucking hell! It, it looks like it feels like, and it smells like, and it tastes like it's been it's been brewed in your mum's bath. It's horrible. Yeah. Don't you think they're just trading off the fact that nobody understands it, so they're just like second guessing the fact that you won't have a clue of what they're talking about, and just go, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I I, I think so because because most stuff when when you spend money, you can you can see the quality. If you get into a Bentley, you can see and you can feel the 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 quality it's there if you if you get a first car class flight on you know qatar air lap airways or whatever the one where you get like a, your own private room on the plane you know you can that, that you can see and you can feel that um whereas i think sort of taste like no one wants to seem like a like a you know like a neanderthal so they 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 just sort of go oh yeah no that's good you know yeah so i've done it i'm guilty of it but yeah i i I'm glad that you guys agree. Um, Baz and I, I'm pretty sure we both agree that you know, um, on on everything like like the that people spending a ridiculous amount of food, ridic- ridiculous amount on uh, on champagne and wine. 100 percent agree. It's 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 a complete waste of time because uh, luddites like us just don't appreciate the nuances no. between those things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, if, if 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 it was sort of the difference between a cheap bottle of being you know a tenner and an expensive bottle being twenty quid and sort of everything in between, then yeah, I might look more into it. But uh, yeah, when you're talking about sort of you know five six hundred pounds for a bottle or something, you just taste it and you're like, mm, okay, that's wasted. You may as well you may as well have poured it down the toilet as opposed to giving it to me. Um, but, but I think what you're saying is uh, both price ranges will get you equally as pissed. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I, I, I love the fact that we've got a guest on from Surrey, and he's the same level of scumbag that we are. So <laughs> that, that's a beautiful, uh, that's a beautiful awakening. Well, I'm, I'm, like about to, I'm about to lose them even more. I'm about to lose my Surrey, my my, my Surrey comrades even more with the next <laughs> one. But, um... <laughs> well, let's lead straight into it. Then. I'm so excited about this. Talk me through <laughs> it. Well, I, I, I don't think I don't think I'm going to. Uh, there's no way I'm bringing both of you with me on this one. I can't stand. BBC sports fans and by that I mean primarily Wimbledon the Olympics things like that I I get that lots of people like sport and what have you but what really pisses me off are kind of the wannabe upper middle class baby boomers who get absolutely balls deep into Wimbledon and the Olympics because it's on free to air TV and they behave like they are the only sports with any suspense ever. And the fact that my mum will religiously watch all of the Olympics, almost unaware that all of those are sports going on in the world all the time with all the same people competing in competitions that mean nearly as much as the Olympics each year. And it, and it really frustrates me. And the whole sort of atmosphere around Wimbledon and the, the it, it just, it's... It's all right. It's not that great. Give me a Premier League game any day. I'd rather watch. I'd rather watch a relegation six pointer than a than a Wimbledon semi final. I'm not saying it's a bad sport. I'm just saying it's a sport. And if it wasn't free to air on the BBC, it would not get millions of viewers. It's just because it's free to air on the BBC. That's why it's so popular. No one's going to get a Sky subscription simply for Wimbledon. A, a few people might, but not many. I would love them for one year for charity to put Wimbledon and the Olympics behind a paywall, a decent paywall, 30 quid or 40 quid, and see how many people actually pay. And the BBC can give the money to charity or whatever. But yeah, this sort of, and this high and mighty thing. I love Wimbledon because it's not like football. No, what you're doing 
is you are trying to associate yourself with the people who go and watch it. And because there's a royal box at Wimbledon and because the Queen showed up to the Olympics, you're trying to associate yourself with them. Whereas because at football or rugby or whatever, it's slightly thuggish, deeply spoken men, you, you, you sort of go, oh, no, I'm not like that. I'm like this over here. So, so yeah, the BBC Sports, the whole atmosphere around it, the laughing at pigeons when they land on the pitch, the the fucking Cliff Richard singing along, like the it just good luck to it, but it's just another sporting event. I wish that everybody who watched them just and all of a sudden, then we've now got the cricket with the hundred and it's on the BBC. So all of a sudden, everybody's back into cricket. It's just like. Oh, sport is there all the time. It costs you 30 quid a month. 30 quid a month is about five pints now. Just put your hand in your pocket if you want to watch it and watch some proper sport. I completely agree with you on this one. Purely because they never used to show eSport before Wimbledon, didn't they? It's, it's a relatively newish thing to, to get out of the BBC. And that's because they need to warm you up to watch Wimbledon. And, and like you say, the same with, um, the, same with uh, the Olympics. They started showing track and field events just before the Olympics to warm you up. And I agree. I don't watch any other track and field or any other tennis matches throughout the entire year because Wimbledon is the only thing they show that's free. And I wouldn't pay to watch it. So, yeah, I, because you're easily, I completely agree with you. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I quite like a Wimbledon final because it's a, sort of like a point of the year. But I, if I had to pay for it, I wouldn't watch it. Well, one of, one of the reasons the Wimbledon final normally does quite well is it's normally about the point of the year where England crash out of a major football tournament and we just kind of look for something to distract us from it. I'm just a little bit surprised that you didn't think you'd drag us both along with this because absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the thing you were saying about the, the, the people who support this kind of thing is like, I just find it so curlingly cringy when you see every single year at Wimbledon there'll be a line of frumpy middle-aged women with like a, a union jack in each hand with like uh, Murray, like an M on this one. Yeah, 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 one yeah, next yeah. them will have a U and R O. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Jesus. And look, I say this as somebody who's been to Wimbledon twice. Okay. The first time I went there, um, I was, um, was 16. The first time I was 16, I was, I was 16. I spent a summer in uh, in Brighton with uh, family friends, um, and it was the it was the first year. Ironically, you mentioning Cliff singing, it was that year because it was the first year that there was so much so much rain that they played on the first Sunday ever or whatever. And I got a ticket for a tenner, so we just went there, camped out overnight, got pissed, and went to watch this thing. So that's that's, um, well, that's about two hundred quid in today's money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then the second time I went there. Um, we got to, we were given tickets to uh, really nice tickets for the semi final women's semi final, um, and my highlight of that as a football fan was that you could take your drink to your seat. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, this is fucking brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So, so me and Emma were just like, look, we've paid nothing for these really expensive seats, right? Um, and it was kind of a work thing as well, so we didn't even pay for travel or anything. So we were just like, right. Let's buy a bottle of the. You know, I'm kind of like going back on what I said. Throwback, before, but, like, throwback. But, the, but this was that point in my life where, like I say, we were spending money like like whatever. Um, so yeah, we're just like uh, a, a bottle of Lauren Perrier sat there. It was like looked around. It was like, and and then was like really enjoying the tennis and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like looking around, going, "Do you lot not know you can bring booze to your seats? <laughs> Why is nobody else kind of?" You know, we're like, "Yay!" I had no idea. And all these people just go, like, are you mental? You can bring boo. You don't have to stop drinking when you go yeah. in here. You can bring it here and you can drink it here. They, they don't take it off you or anything. <laughs> Nobody understood. Well, that's, that's another thing that sort of annoys me with, with, with kind of those. Because, I mean, I go to the cricket and I go to the rugby where you can drink in the stands as well. Mm. And, um, and, like, enough times at the cricket, I mean, granted with the Barmy Army, it's a little bit different, but, like, enough times at the cricket, sort of, you, you, you get these sort of people, especially with, the, with, like, Wimbledon, which I've been to, like, a, a few times, it'll be sort of like, oh, you're allowed to drink in the, the stands. And, you know, it's almost like it's a joke that football fans aren't allowed to to drink in the fans. The stands, sorry. And, and, mm. and, and you do, 
you do kind of think like, have you been to a football match? Have you seen the atmosphere that's there? Even it's the family night version. and day between <laughs> what we're experiencing here. Where I go to at Chelsea, when we sit in the Matthew Harding stand south, right? It is insane. It's definite. It's and, and that is held up by the Premier League as the butt of the joke, as the rubbish atmosphere. And when you're there, it's almost like the gravity of the chant makes you chant. Your 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 body doesn't have a choice. It is so loud and so and, and yet you you then go to somewhere like Wimbledon and they go you don't get that at the football it's like what laughing at pigeons no you don't <laughs> you, you you get <laughs> you get 50,000 people singing quite clever chants to the to the to the tune of school hymns it, it's kind of yeah it, 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 i i just don't like how people have not experienced any other sport then feel free, then, then sort of feel qualified to lecture you who's there on other sports and why they're not as good. Um, okay, Phil, what have you got for us now then? Uh, Londoners. Um, but not Londoners when they stay within the realm of London. It's the moment Londoners leave London and then want to change the area that they're moving to. No one wants them there. If they are going to go, then they've just got to sit on their hands and shut up and accept the place that they've moved to for where they wanted to move to and not say, yes, I want to move to a fish, fishing town in the northeast to then demand that there are chained coffee shops there and bridal suites and the local church no longer does services on a Sunday but hosts graffiti art and uh everybody must have an acoustic guitar in the pub and, and that sort of thing if you look at every single region of this country that has been ruined in the last 30 years it's either been through poorly applied capitalism which can be fixed i'm sure i know it can just give it another chance youngsters or <laughs> londoners go in there in their masses People say sort of out-of-towners, people say mover inners, people say hipsters, people say all of these things. It's not. It's Londoners. I live about 12 miles away from London, and when one of them walks by me, I feel physically sick. So you, they, 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 they instantly believe they're better than everybody else. It's their sense of humour or no sense of humour. Now, because post-pandemic, they can all work remotely and they only have to go to London two days a week or one day a week or three days a month, they can move off all around the country and take their can't-do attitude with them. <laughs> the BBC has done it to Manchester. The BBC move into Manchester. And Manchester is the next town to become like London. You, you, you start to get slight feelings of these sort of easily offended but quick to offend people uh the, the the sort of socially acceptable of everybody but you've yet to meet someone they socially accept that exists in the real world you, you just kind of it, it's this sort of metropolitan i don't want to say elite because a lot of them aren't elite they're just they just have these opinions to fit in around the people they work with and they can't voice another opinion even if they want to because then they won't be part of the in crowd in my experience obviously for the people that moved out of london to where i live all of those people just began with oh isn't it quaint and you know and you have all these little quaint sort of you know areas around you know i live in a town currently which is a small town they uh they moved out here and they moved into a, a massive house which was like 15 times as big as their apartment in London. They've got two children and all they've done since they've been here, and they're lovely, but all they've done since they've been here is just say, oh, isn't it wonderful you've got all this space? Well, like, well, that's what it's like outside of London, surely. Yeah, it, it, it grinds my gears. And, and then, it, you know, you'll get enough of them move somewhere and want to make a place their local. They want a pub to be their local. They've never had that before. And then so many of them move in that the, the local pub then becomes unbearable. So then all of the locals stop going there. And then because Londoners only go in for quiz night every single week, that it, it then fails and, and falls apart. They're to, blame for, they're to blame for most things. They sort of behave like they've never lived anywhere other than London. 
but very few people in London have lived there since birth. Very, very few people. They're normally from Yorkshire. They got their degree. They moved there when they were 21. They're now 31. They lived there for 10 years. They've lived there for a third of their life. And they leave and they think that, like, you know, like, where are buskers? Don't you miss buskers? It's like, no, I don't miss buskers. They're annoying. Yeah. It, oh, winds me up. <laughs> and on that bombshell, um, I think it's time for us to finish the podcast. So, uh, so Baz, um, have you got anything you want to say? Like, the, the, you know, the, 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 the bit that you end every podcast with? My only role. So, uh, so Phil, I'm aware are you on a lot of different platforms now. So where can people find you that want to find out what you do and, uh, and get mildly, you know, mildly offended by what you do? Thank you very much, Baz. And if by a lot of platforms you mean two platforms, then, yeah, you're right. Um, you can find me on TikTok at PhilC84, so please follow me there. But don't, you don't have to watch my stuff there because it doesn't pay anything to me. So please go to at PhilCar84 on Facebook where it does pay me something. Not much, but hopefully it will do it somewhere. It's going up slowly. It's going up slowly. But yeah, so uh, PhilCar84 on Facebook and PhilC84 on TikTok. I'm not on Instagram because it's the devil and I'm not on YouTube because... It's too much like hard work. It's, it's just too <laughs> hard, isn't it? It's, it's, the thought of starting a new YouTube just exhausts me. So, it, yeah. <laughs> thank you. So, very much. thank you. Uh, thanks, Phil, for being here. Um, I've enjoyed your company again, as always. Um, Baz, thanks for being here, as always. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we will see you next time. Bye.